as if to say that the construction of one development on Ruthven Road somehow immediately destroys and deprives everyone else of housing. And it is designed as an entity to promote housing development and the development of communities. Now, this is done by taking contributors' funds and funds from employers and it is those contributions that are held in trust and this trust fund is designed to serve contributors we have over these many years taken contributors funding and used it for the general purpose of creating home ownership opportunities. So we have taken contributors funding and we have used it in social housing, meaning we have used contributors funding to support housing for persons who have not contributed to the NHT. As far as I'm concerned, there's nothing wrong with that. If it does not deprive contributors of the opportunity for housing. Because then that wouldn't be fair. Already, there is the question of fairness. Persons have contributed to the funds over these years and have not been able to get a benefit. So what have, what have we done since taking office in 2016 to ensure that the NHD is aligned to contributors' interests and at the same time address the growing and wide need of persons who are not contributors, they don't have an income, they are not employed, they are really poor, but our belief as a society, our social ethos is that shelter is an entitlement for Jamaicans. We should give a guarantee to our citizens for this. So what have we done? Well, the first thing we have said to the NHD, build house. Use your resources that have been piling up year and year and year that people start to salivate on it. To say the NHD has this massive reserve, which is not true. But it would appear so because you're not converting those reserves into houses at a fast enough rate. And we have hived off some of that into other activities. I don't want to go into too much, but you know, people remember, because if I raise it, you're going to hear the, the contention again. Uh, I, I see O'Neill smiling. But for context, we have put some into education and we have put some into the fiscal sustainability program. For those of you who understand that code terminology, I won't go any further with it. But the truth is that if the reserve, the cash reserves, were converted into housing, then you wouldn't really take anything out of it because it is in housing held by the contributors and for those in the society who are not able to contribute but who we have used the resources to give a benefit. So the NHD, we have taken the policy decision and the NHD is now closer aligned to its original mandate, which is to build housing for persons to be able to access. The people here who are about to get the keys to their homes would be beneficiaries of this government policy and I will go a little bit more than is into how the policy has worked. 
But since we have taken an office as well, we have also changed policy in favor of contributors and non-contributors to bring interest rates to their present levels, which are very low. I mean, if you earn $15,000 a week or less, the interest rate on your mortgage is zero. Zero. You can get a grant from the NHD of up to 2.5 million grant that is with take up the money and give it to the beneficiary. So it kind of rubs me the wrong way as well when I hear the blanket criticisms without context of what the NHD is doing. As if to say that the construction of one development on Ruthven Road somehow immediately destroys and deprives everyone else of housing. Without context. As if to say the people who will benefit from Ruthven Road are not contributors as well. That is the mandate of the NHD is to build housing for contributors. I'm going to go further in showing how the NHD has given in social housing, has given back. There are several schemes which the NHD has partnered with or is involved with that were they to come to market, they would be unaffordable. And the NHD has taken contributors' money and subsidized those units so that the average Jamaican can afford it. One scheme comes to mind in St. James, built for tourism workers. Is it the, is it the Avery? Esther, he mixes them up. The Esther. Over one billion dollars of NHD funds were used to subsidize that development so that workers in the tourism sector could have afford those houses. And there are several that leave it to the NHD to explain how they have put subsidies in to bring the cost of housing down. And that was $1.02 billion subsidizing 1,500 housing solutions to ensure the price stayed down. We did the same for Money Musk and Sevens in Clarendon, where we spent over $326 million subsidizing, bringing down the cost. And that is part of our, what we consider our social housing, social justice duty under the NHL. The development at, the, at Ruth Bend Road will have no such subsidy. The persons who are likely to benefit from those housing developments will pay close to market cost, if not market cost, and they will not necessarily benefit from the band which gives significant reduction in interest rates. So they will be paying close to market in interest rates as well. That development will be used in the, in, in the sense that whatever we make of that development, which is not much, we will recover costs and maybe make a slight little profit. But all of that goes back into the NHD for further use in developing projects like this one. And I want to just make a comparison. There is value, ladies, 
in the argument that maybe the NHD should not be focused in that segment of the market, the roof and roof table. And uh, there have been cost escalations. But the project has still come out very reasonable relative to similar projects uh, in the vicinity of the case. But I just wanted to address those issues and to point out that under construction currently, the NHT has 12,019 units. Michael Manley would be proud of that because this is the most that the NHT has ever had under construction for any period, including when it was building over Fort Worth. It has 12,019 units under construction. If you look at the statistics for the last 10 years, you will see five, seven. We have doubled it. And we are arguing over 86 units. 12,019, of which more than 95% of these units are affordable to low income. In addition, the NHT is currently planning and designing 9,641 units. So, what you have is a, a flow. So, when that 12,019 that is under construction, as those come out of construction, you will have a replacement from those moving out of planning. And that's the pipeline. So, for the next two to three years, right, you will have over 21,000, almost 22,000 housing solutions guaranteed to be on the market. That's not enough. Not going to solve our problem, but it is going to take us a far way to the solutions. My only challenge, Martin, is to ensure that we keep that target up. 8 million as a target. The NHD would be spending upwards of about $100 million currently on the housing solutions that are under development and about another $95 billion on those that are in planning. So when it comes to driving economic growth through housing, the expenditure of the NHD is significant. And I want to commend the board, commend the, the, the management of the NHD in fulfilling the mandate that has been given to you, build houses. I know the pressures can be high, but what happens, you know, is that as you come under pressure, you become stronger. <laughs> yes, you become stronger. And that's what I want from the, the NHG. Keep focus. Keep focus on that mission of building housing for Jamaicans. And this is, of course, a demonstration of the NHG fulfilling its mission. You have now constructed here a hundred and ten units two bedroom quad no, 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 two bedroom duplexes tastefully done I mean this is very very tastefully done the, the, the beneficiaries I can see behind the mask that they are very happy very very happy with the units And Merlin, you had pointed out that we have to put in infrastructure. This is very spacious in terms of the lot sizes. And I do know, Martin, that you have some infrastructure for a multi-purpose playing field and uh, for, for, for jogging and recreation. You have made provisions for parking. The only thing I would say is that when the homeowners take over the property, you should try 
to ensure that it is properly greened and fruited. And, and Berlin do not object with the greening and, and fruiting of the property. So get the grass in, plant a whole lot of trees, and you will find that that will be very, very helpful. You are close to the highway, and the trees can act as a salt barrier and as a, and as a dust barrier as well. And of course, same thing with the, with the grass. And it will just create the atmosphere that you would want. The, these houses, the, the, the price that I'm seeing here for the duplex two bedroom single story is $13.7 million, which is still above the target. But obviously, this was started before the policy direction was entrenched in the NHD. But it is still affordable and still in line with what housing solutions with this level of lot size, square footage and of roof uh, and location is, is going for. Very interesting, however, in terms of the distribution of the applicants. 11 applicants would be within the wage threshold for which they would be paying zero interest which I think it's, it's good. Well, no, it's, it's 23 applicants are in that threshold where their interest rates would be zero. There are 12 applicants in the income threshold where their interest rate on the NHD loan would be 2%. And there are 38 applicants in the income threshold where their interest rate would be 4%. So you find, Minister, that there is a distribution of income levels within the community, which is what we want. You don't want to create mountains. You, you want to have diverse communities. And so I'm, I'm happy to, to see that, and that is an important point to share. Importantly as well, there are six beneficiaries who would be in the age group 19 to 25. So there are some young people who would benefit. Minister Charles and myself would not be in that category anymore, maybe two or three years ago. But actually, there you know, in the 19 to 25, I'm seeing six, and in the 26 to 35, there are 12. So again, another element of diversity. Young people are getting an opportunity. What is not often said is that the NHD upfront reserves housing in its housing schemes under special orders to ensure that public sector workers and the disabled get preferential access to housing. In this housing development, 26 such units were reserved. Again, in ensuring diversity in access to housing. So I put you through this torturous journey of a presentation to make the point that not everything that you hear goes on. And that not all the conversations that are carried are conversations that are based in facts or have the full context. And it is my duty, obviously, to always be ensuring that the public is properly informed and that the context is clear. The NHD is fulfilling its mandate. Even so, we're going to be reviewing when we have reviewed to ensure that it is fully aligned. There are some changes to be made, particularly in terms of how the NHD uses its resources for social housing programs. We have to make sure 
that we are not in any way creating a disadvantage for contributors. And at the same time, ensuring that the agencies that are created for the social housing programs, the Ministry of Housing and the HHA, that they are adequately funded to do that. So maybe the NHD doesn't need to be in the market directly, it could pass the funding on, which it does know, but we could probably make that more streamlined. The, the, the second thing that we have to look at is whether or not the NHD should continue to have any footprint whatsoever in the higher income category, uh, which would be young professionals uh, would probably be at a disadvantage there. But we, we will have to look at it based upon, you know, as we say, we are a democracy, we pay attention to what the public is saying. So again, we will have to examine that margin to see whether or not we should be in that, in that category. I don't believe we'll be able to look at interest rates just yet. We have to take a, a second look at how the portfolio is used and how the portfolio can be leveraged to get more housing. So we are ensuring that the NHD is relevant. Uh, we are ensuring that Michael Mandy will be proud of the NHD. Uh, and it is my wish, as it was uh, Michael Mandy's wish, to see every Jamaica have an opportunity to descend shelter. Thank you and God bless you.